Hello and welcome to Craft with Sarah. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this unicorn box art frame. This was one of the first projects I ever made on Craft with Sarah about three years ago. And even now, it's still one of my most popular projects. It's really easy to make and you don't need a Cricut machine or any other specialist tools to make it. All you're gonna to need to do is head on over to craftwithsarah.com or follow the link in the description below to get the free printable to start making your unicorn frame. One of the things I really love about this is you can personalize it based on who you're giving it to. So you can change the color of the flowers or the glitter and you can even theme it based on the time of year. Here's one that I made for Halloween last year. So the colors are all a lot darker and richer. We've got oranges and purples and golds. And then I've added some black roses around the edge of the frame. And you probably can't see in the video, but I even hot glued on some tiny little spiders to complete that Halloween effect. So let's get started on making our unicorn wall art. Once you've printed out the template, we need to just cut it so that it's a square. I'm not sure if it's showing up on the video, but there's a horizontal line about three quarters of the way down the page. So just take a um, paper trimmer or a ruler and craft knife and just cut along that line. So now this is all nice and square, ready for our box frame. The next step is to add glitter down all of the different sections of the unicorn's horn. You can use any colour you want for this, but for this one I'm going to follow the colours on the printable. So I've got a pink, a bluey green and a purple glitter which I'm going to use. Extra fine glitter works best for this just because it's a bit smaller in texture um, and some of the bits on the horn are quite small. So a thinner glitter will show up better. If you're doing it for Halloween, you might want to choose oranges and blacks and purple and green. Um, or for Christmas, maybe reds and greens and golds. So it doesn't really matter what colour you choose, um, because you're not going to see any of these colours through once we've added the glitter. I find the best thing for adding glitter is Mod Podge glue. It is easy to spread, so it fills in all the little spaces in all the sections, and it dries quickly and it dries clear. So I'm going to open that up and I've got a little paintbrush to apply it with. The smaller the paintbrush the easier it will be, especially on the very top bits of the horn. We're going to add the glitter colour by colour and then when we have any excess I've just folded a normal piece of printer paper in half. So I'm going to put my unicorn on top of that so that I'll be able to shake off all the excess glitter. Alright, so I'm going to start with the purple, so just get a little bit of glue, you don't need very much for this. And just carefully fill in the coloured part of the horn with glue. You want to make sure all of the colour has glue on it so that the glitter will stick everywhere. Especially if you're using a colour of glitter that isn't the same colour as the printable. Um, because you don't want any of the original colour showing through. It doesn't matter if you go into the black lines a little bit um, because the glitter will just cover it and it will look fine. Work one colour at a time. So I'm just um, doing all the purple sections. If you find your glue's drying a bit quickly, you can put the glitter on each section um, as you go rather than waiting till the end. So. My little tip there had dried a bit. Okay, when you're happy, take your glitter and just tap it all over that glue. Get a nice covering to make sure every little bit of that glue will be covered in glitter. I'm gonna wait just a few seconds so that that'll stick. And then turn my unicorn horn over and just tap off any excess. the horn to um, one side and then because we folded this paper it's going to make it really easy to add all this excess back into the pot. So take your glitter pot and then just pour the glitter in and it'll fall down the crease in the paper to neatly go back into your pot. 
Okay, so I'd normally recommend waiting for that to dry before going on to the next colour, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to crack straight on with it. So I'm going to move on to the pink glitter, my pink, and then just shake it over the new glue. Tap off the excess. I've got one colour left to do. So I'm just going to cover this in glue again. And here we have it, our unicorn horn, all nicely glittery and sparkly. There are a few little bits of glitter dotted around the, um, the sheet, so you can just wipe those off carefully or use a clean and dry paintbrush um, to get rid of them. So once that's all dry, it is time to start adding the flowers. I've got out my collection of flowers so that I can choose which ones I want to add onto the unicorn. Here's my unicorn all ready for her crown and I'm going to start with a big one in the middle. So let's choose a pink one I think. I might do more of a purple one because I've got quite a lot of purple flowers so do a nice purple one. So once you've got your middle flower, don't stick anything down yet, we're going to arrange all the flowers around it and then see how it all fits before we start gluing. I've got these little creamy coloured flowers with gold centres. I think it'll look nice to have one of those either side. You don't need to keep it symmetrical if you don't want to. Um, but I quite like it matching. I've got these ones as well for some more purple. In fact, I might replace those creamy ones with more purple just to make it an entirely purple crown. So you can see it's really up to you what you want to do with um, the crown, however you want to do it. So you could do it in your favourite colours or um, Sorry if you can hear that, next door's just started drilling, which is very helpful when I'm trying to record a video. Um, so yeah, you can do it in whatever colours you want to fit a season or the favourite colour of the person who um, you're making it for. Whatever you want, it is up to you. Keep arranging the flowers on the unicorn until you're happy with they're all positioned. When you're ready to stick, just take your paintbrush again with a little bit of Mod Podge. And then we're just going to stick them down one at a time, starting in the middle. The reason we start in the middle is so that we can make sure all the flowers are touching each other to form the crown as we go along. If you started gluing on the ends, you might find when you got to the middle there wasn't enough room to put your big flower in anymore. Um, or it was a bit too squidged, or maybe there were gaps that you then couldn't fill. So you don't need to add too much glue, more podge is quite sticky, but enough there that it's going to hold the flowers, particularly if you're using ones that have got beads and things on them which are a little bit heavier. I'm sliding the flowers underneath the petals of the other flowers so it looks like they're all joined together to make the crown. One of the nice things about using glue is that if you need to, you've got a bit of wiggle time before it dries to uh, move the flowers about to get them into the exact position you want. I find it easiest to stick all the larger flowers first and then work your way smaller because you can use the small flowers to fill in all the gaps that you've got between the bigger ones. Now I'm just using these little roses as fillers and also the smaller ones are nice for creating the sort of flicks around the end where it gets to the edge of the crown. Don't worry if you get a little bit of glue anywhere it's not supposed to go it will dry clear so you won't see it. Once all your flowers are stuck down and you're happy with how they're all positioned you need to wait for it to dry completely before you put it in the frame. 
if you try and frame it when it's still wet, when you hold it up to put it in the frame, you might find some of your flowers drip off the bottom and move around, um, which is not what we want. So make sure it dries completely and then we'll go about putting it in our frame. Don't forget to uh, wash your paintbrush really carefully after using Mod Podge. Don't let it dry on the brush because then your brush will be ruined and you can't get it off. So I'm just going to pause this video, go wash my paintbrush, wait for my unicorn to dry and then come back and frame it. Everything's dry now so I'm ready to frame the unicorn. My bit of white paper was a little bit too small to fit inside the frame I've chosen so I've had to cut a mat to go around the outside so that it'll fit. I've just cut this out of scrapbook paper in a nice purple colour to match the purple of the flowers. If uh, your sheet is also too small to fit in your frame then you'll need to cut a mat and that's quite easy to do. First you need to take your frame and then take out the spacer that sits in the middle. Get a ruler and measure from one edge of the spacer to the other. So mine is 8.5 inches and that's the size the outside of your mat is going to need to be. To find the inside size, just use your ruler to decide how much you want the mat to cover. I did mine at 7.5 inches on the inside. So you can then measure out on a um, piece of scrapbook paper or card the different squares and cut it out or if you've got a Cricut machine then um, open up design space and you can make two square shapes in different sizes slice the smaller one out of the larger one and then that gives you the frame which will cut out perfectly. If you'd like a tutorial on how to do that in Design Space check out my button art video which I've linked in the description below this video. Alright so we need to stick this frame or mat onto the unicorn. The easiest way to do this so that you can line it up exactly how you want it to appear is to stick it from the top rather than turning it over and doing it upside down. So I'm going to use glue so that I've got a bit of wiggle room to move it about if I don't quite get it right on the first go. I'm using tacky glue for this um, because it's got a nice thin nozzle for some precision here but you could use your Mod Podge again just be careful not to put too much on. So I'm just going to go along each edge of the white frame and just add a little bit of glue. You really don't need very much at all. And be sure to keep right to the edges because you don't want this glue to show through onto the rest of the white of the card once you've stuck the frame on. If you're using heavy card as your mat, you might need a little bit more glue, but mine's just paper so it doesn't need an awful lot. And then just place this over gently and then you can wiggle it about until you're happy with how it's positioned. You need to make sure that none of the white card from underneath is poking out the edges because then it will be too big to go in your frame. So I'm just pressing it down gently to stick the purple card on but without um, spreading the glue out and squishing it all in. So that's ready and again I'm going to wait for that one to dry before putting it in my frame. Now the glue is dry it's time to start framing the unicorn. So here's my box frame and I've got the spacer back inside there. If you want to add any um, glittery sparkly bits to the inside of the frame now is your chance to do that. So I've got some table glitter. You'd normally use this at weddings or parties to put on your tables to add a bit of sparkle but it looks really nice in the bottom of frames. So that's quite a small one and then I've also got um, some larger scatter crystals as well. You can pick these up on Amazon or eBay for a couple of pounds for a big bag um, so they're quite cost effective. 
All right, you can also put in sequins or embellishments, little flowers, whatever you want to put in there. Um, when I made a flamingo butternut design, I put some pink feathers in there. One thing I'd avoid is glitter though, because that gets really staticky and it can stick to the glass, which means when you turn it over to look at it, you've just got all this glitter stuck, which doesn't look great. When you've put in everything that you want, just take your lovely unicorn, turn it upside down and place it on the back of the, um, the the spacer in the box frame. See, it fits in there, absolutely perfect. The last thing to do is to add the back to your frame and put that in there and then fold down all the little bits along the edge and then it's ready for the big reveal. Once you've closed off your frame, you'll get your finished wall art piece just like this one. So you can see as I move it about how all those gemstones move about and you've got the glitter on the horn and all of the lovely flowers. I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial and if you'd like to make one for yourself, follow the link in the description of this video to get the free printable. If you'd like to keep up to date with my videos, please subscribe to my channel and if you enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up using the little button below. Thank you for watching.